This is the introduction to the CSC SIS50 sustainer saw. I'm going to walk through the process of getting it all set up and ready to cut. First thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and lay it flat. Being that it's all contained, I simply just pull out on these two green latches, lift this up. And if we look inside, there's a bunch of accessories that we can use here later on during the video. First thing I'm going to do is I've already installed these two batteries. So what I'll do is I'll turn the power switch on. And what that does is that activates the uh, user interface screen over here. And this is brand new out of the box, so the first thing I'm going to do is select the language I want to be in. Of course, I'm going to cho choose English. And then I can also choose metric or imperial. I'll go ahead with imperial and simply just press the green dial. And then it says start reference drive. The reference drive, that is basically it's going to go through all the angles and the height to make sure everything is working correctly. To get that activated, I'll simply just press and hold. As I do that, you can see it's moving through the different angles and heights of the blade itself. You can also see on the screen that it's showing a progress bar. So it shows you how far it is and how much longer it has to go. You do not have to do this every time you start up the saw. Once you do it once, you'll be good to go. Then all I have to do is just hit it one more time and that'll select the checkbox. And now I can calibrate the height and the angle as well. We'll show that on a later video. So the next step is I can adjust for the height itself. And I simply just turn this dial and that's going to adjust the height up and down. Then I can press this button down below it and that will adjust the angle as well. There's four on-screen presets that I can go ahead and set. So I'll set my height by pressing the top button. Then I can set my angle by pressing the bottom button. And if you notice, as I adjust the height, it also adjusts the angle. And once I have those set, I'll just press both the buttons at the same time. And then I can scroll all the way right there. Hit that, and now that is set as one of my presets. So if I'm cutting material over and over again at a certain height or an angle, I can go ahead and set my presets. And then if I look more into the user interface, if I press the green dial twice, obviously the first one is closed, I can get out of the menu. And then there's a speed. I can adjust the speed for different materials. So if I click on the saw blade change, I'll press and hold it, and it'll do two things. It'll set it to the correct height, and also at a slight angle, which will allow me to change the blade easily. To change the blade, it's pretty straightforward, I'll have to get the sliding table out of the way. The first thing I'm going to do there is move this, and that'll slide that out of the way. Then on the back of the saw is the included wrench, which will allow me to open this up. Then I can access the blade itself. Of course, if you're going to change that, be sure you take off both the batteries. Then once you're complete with that, you can just hit the X again. We've gone through the reference drive already, and there's also a help guide. So if you forget some of these features, you can simply click on the help guide, hit start, and that'll walk you through and tell you what each function does. And the top of the CSC can also be extended by simply pressing this green lever, lift the outfeed table. The fence is very straightforward. Simply lift the lever. I can slide that back and forth. And this edge right here will tell you exactly what you're cutting. So I can adjust it to say three inches and I know this is exactly three inches. If you need to calibrate it, there's two simple screws right here. You can calibrate that distance. I also have the capability of putting this fence in a different position and I have a much smaller reference edge. You can put that back. Knock that into place. And then also we have a push stick on the side of the fence that is locked into place as well. For the sliding fence, it also has a T-slot on it and that is for your angle adjustment which is on top of the sustainer itself. And that will slide into here. 
And then I can also open that up, close that. Now that locks the T-fence onto the sliding table. Lock these into place. I can adjust my fence left and right. And then when I'm cutting, I can hold my material down here, make my cut. I can also install one of our clamps into the, the table itself and hold the material down tight and secure. When you pull the saw out of the sustainer, it has a riving knife installed. We also have available inside the sustainer that comes with the saw is a protective shroud with a riving knife. To change that out, I need to put the blade in the park position. To do so, you simply go to the screen with the height and the angle adjustment, go all the way down to the P, that puts it in the park position, press and hold. Now I'm in the proper position to change out the riving knife. Simply do that by using the wrench in the back, push it in the little hole in the back, lift that up, then you simply just slide this in. So now that I'm done for the day, I'll go ahead and wrap the saw up, get it put back in the sustainer. There's just a couple things that you have to look out for, and it's anytime you see this P means the park position. And that's where you're going to put everything to be able to put it back in the sustainer and put the, the sustainer lid back on the saw. So the first thing I'll do is I'll take out the miter gauge, lifting that lever, make sure that's locked into place. And I'll simply just line these two P's up, lock that in. And then on the miter gauge itself, I'll put that, lock that into P, park position. That'll allow me to put it back into its specific spot inside the sustainer. Next thing I do is to switch out the protective covering. And to get it to the proper height, I have to set it to the park position. So I'll go over to this screen, select P, press and hold. Now I'll take the supplied wrench. Take that out, lock that into place, put this back in its special spot. I'll go ahead and put the outfeed table up just by simply pressing on both the arms, sliding that down and that locks into place. I want to make sure I've got the fence in the correct park position. Simply line that edge up with the arrow of the P right here, lock that into place. I know the blade's in the park position, everything else is ready to go. I'll go ahead and power it off. Now I can put my lid back on. Now to put the lid back on the saw, I always try and remember that the T-lock goes towards the front of the saw with the user interface. Slides down, that locks into place, then that locks into place.